Okay. Uh, go ahead, um, Arthur. Yeah, so to, to help with the problem of identification of the skills and availability and the time zones too, I think the most <coughs> helpful thing will be this anonymous roster thing that we have. And I've been using it for my internal purposes of finding people to help with very specific things. But it's, it's quite great. Like obviously it can be enriched with LinkedIn's and uh, personal input, but it's, it's plenty just to have the skills and having the time zone and availability. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, for me it would be like the next step once I, I, uh, I, I, once I uh, went through the whole uh, list of members of our team and I'm sure, okay, everyone who was there and uh, with whom I, 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 I have spoken uh, actually is like on the same page or is informed, updated about what is going on or whether this person is, uh, is eager to help or has some time, how much time, etc. Once it's done and I still need somebody, then I can go over to this uh, general uh, like database HR database kind of. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have a couple of persons more and I think that uh, that is more or less clear that the motivation that why I'm doing this kind of uh, re-enboarding or uh, re-engaging of, of people. And I will start with the agenda proposed by, by Imran today. Um, the first question on the agenda was like three questions in our channel, just three or four, something like that search engine uh yeah who is this for i mean uh could you like imran do you want to know uh, how many persons we have and uh, which person will be responsible for which domain or task that that's the question no so my question is related to whatever we're building right this metadata extraction um this knowledge graph extraction um who do we have product in mind user, this? right? The persona. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll I'll jump in here just from my experience on, of you know having uh, experience of solving for exact same thing. It's always tough, and you aim to re reduce stuff, right? To you know kind of get to the specifics, and then you can expand to more general things. Like Airbnb didn't start from you know conquering the world. It started from the mattresses in uh, whatever San Francisco area for the conference. Uh, the Uber didn't start from, you know, doing everything at once. It started from the black cards. And even though, you know, these are commercial things and we're dealing with, you know, purely open source thing, it, it still is the same analogy that we have to follow with the exception of the vision that we are actually building everything for everyone and that's impossible so for right now we're definitely focusing on creating the literature review product for researchers to help solve COVID-19 yeah and I think like that's a really good point Arturi. you were talking about like kind of like starting small and then building up um, uh, to that point because I did see from uh, the other channel discovery engine channel that um, I think there's kind of like that overlap in terms of we are building up the uh, basic infrastructure around the literature review tool. So, um, and also because I don't think Christine's here, but like this was originally for uh, internal users to use it and Christine's team is making good use of it as well. So um, perhaps we should start with kind of keeping in mind that we'll just be building this to support the other tasks. And then this will naturally grow into the literature review tool, which has a larger timeline, I'm assuming. Yeah, and uh, the, the key piece that I'm failing to describe is how all of this you know, giant stuff layers down on, on the arrow of time. And that's something that we need to do better. And maybe you guys can help me with that formalization just understanding what is present, what is the nearest future and what can be the grand future. And <clears throat> even though like, like we are lacking that arrow of time, it's still useful to think about um, you know, these things in, and reduce them to some level of concepts, right? So not to overload you guys with uh, what my thoughts are, but I'm gonna share my screen 
and um, yeah, that that usually another tab. Uh huh. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I I do have a lot of tabs, but um, basically, um, I the thing that I had a very productive conversation with Michael Smart Caveman, and he he has a similar way of you know seeing the world through these you know concepts and. He helped me a lot to understand a little bit better what we're creating. And the, the first thing that I want to kind of bring your attention to is the fact that we're like the AI power literature review tools. We're, we're not creating anything unique here, at least at this point of time, we're just aggregating a lot of things together, be it elastic search, be it data, be it, you know, a lot of different things like hypothesis, and all of these things will tie together to create um, kind of the, the, the MVP, the minimum viable product for, for researchers to be able to at least have something that uh, will help make them sense of the growing uh, data set of scientific papers. Is this piece clear in, in terms of how I see it? So would it be fair to say that um, in a sense, the infrastructure we're making or we're planning on making is the tool that everyone else will be using in terms of we're aggregating all That's the awesome. different kinds of metadata and stuff like that. Kind of. Uh, again, I, I think it's complex question because all of these things are interconnected and are a part of each other. But you know, on the end user experience, that's just tables. That's just a way for people to, you know, see the, the list of tables and like, they don't care if it was produced by AI ontology engine, or if it was produced by, you know, hundreds of medical professionals as this result is, they, they're just really interested in, in the outputs, which is the tables this is the format how researchers do literature reviews as of right now does it make sense mm -hmm. yeah okay so now i'm gonna try and answer your question about the like what is discovery engine and like what exactly is the overlap and like what is how does search engine fit into this because that's actually the question that i had for a while and i wasn't able to understand how it fits and the best way to explain it uh, is kind of like this diagram of different entities. So in a similar way, we have this kind of team discovery something, the prefix. And then the, the closest thing to that, because it is a product, right? So there has to be some interface to interact with it. And it's not going to be tables. It's not going to be uh, similar to literature review process. But literature review process and outputs are kind of submissive to, to this. They, they are merged into this interface. And the question is how? And the, the how part is so far, I've identified three big things, which are search engines, which is you know, basically letting people at least type in something, right? So to give you an example, if person goes in here, they, first of all, they need to know what to look for. If they're interested in heart disease as a risk factor, obviously they need to type in like heart. And then they see the risk factor is heart disease stuff and they can you know, navigate that. But also they have to have knowledge that you know, heart stuff is also called cardio stuff. And that's how they find cardio um, and cerebrovascular disease tables. So that way the search engine really fits in, in the way of allowing the user use the interface to navigate uh, the data, right? And the assumption is that the search engine actually works with all of these things, with all of the data pieces, and also the outputs of the AI uh, literature review process. And it just like acts as a filter, right? Because that's essentially the, the function of a search engine. The bigger piece that is yet to be defined is actually the inference engine. And this inference engine is best described by this weird analogy of cooking. Um, you know, in technical terms, like there are two analogies that Michael helped me build up. 
The first one for non-technical people is abduction and deduction. Um, I kind of don't get it. The second one is map and reduce, which is, you know, if you're familiar with technology, you, you probably get it. And the normal human analogy is actually cooking. So the way you, you go into the grocery store and you buy ingredients, that doesn't necessarily mean you can cook. You still need a recipe, something, and the process that prepares those ingredients into an actual meal. And that's what I think is this inference engine that is actually the, the grand vision. Like if we can create that, that's, that's amazing. But it's also probably broken down into many, many different small things, many different teams and tasks because of its grandiosity. And the last piece um, is tracing engine because it's, it's actually impossible to trust the inference engine without some level of traceability. And in the, in the current world, we kind of assume that they, that traceability exists through various infrastructures. So to give you an example, when we go to a restaurant, we don't really care. And like we assume that restaurant did the best selection of ingredients. They went to the best grocery store. They found the best supplier and they kind of did their job. And they're also explaining to us that, hey, this, you know, chicken Kiev, um, um, you know, cutlet is made of chicken, breadcrumbs, butter, and, you know, uh, uh, some other things. And we, even though we, we, we trust them in, in the ability to assemble it, we also have traceability in terms of ingre ingredients, explainability of uh, what it consists of. So enabling that trust engine and exposing it uh, to be able to help researchers understand how this inference engine comes to specific uh, process of deriving knowledge and helping them reduce uncertainty is equally as important as inference itself. And that is obviously a mega hard problem that you know DARPA's and deep minds of the world and open AIs have been trying to solve in terms of explainability of uh, machine learning. So I'm, I'm not even sure we're able to solve this piece uh, as a thousand members. That's probably even bigger piece, but we can at least establish infrastructure to facilitate other teams to, to be working on. <coughs> All right, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really a nice presentation. I liked how you kind of split everything off in a nice, concise tasks. Um, would you guys mind if I also presented yet another uh, diagram? Yep. Let's go. The more diagrams, the better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, this is regarding kind of like the search engine part of um, Archer's main overview diagram. And because we have a lot of people who are kind of on standby, but just don't know what exactly needs to be done, I kind of split it off into like, many products right and i think like especially regarding the inference engine this is actually kind of building out the infrastructure for us to do the elastic search which is the search engine right so um right now uh kevin lee is working on creating a knowledge graph specifically for um eco and exo ontology um what's coincidentally i would actually relate to the inference engine. But the main thing is that this pipeline creates knowledge graphs for um, everyone else to use, right? Like for example, task VT is using this uh, sim similar process to get protein, protein interaction. And then this language-based model, which is most of our classifications where we actually use the embeddings themselves and semantic search, um, which is kind of what we mainly uh, would consider search engine. And then we have the metadata extraction, which um, is part of the infrastructure, which everyone needs, right? Like uh, task ties specifically called for it as well. Um, I don't think Maya is here, but I haven't checked with uh, her team if they also need metadata extraction. But this is kind of like how I split it off into like mini products for us to kind of start getting working on this. It makes sense to me. 
Anyone, anyone else uh, have anything they want to add to it as well? Yeah, uh, I'll, <clears throat> uh, I, I like this piece that Imran, you already kind of, you know, put everything into atoms, deliverable atoms. And now we could actually kind of split them out a little bit. And I mean, they are right separate. So there is no need to communicate all of this uh, everyday calls, et cetera. So let's, mm -hmm. let's package all of those things into teams, like tasks. Again, mm -hmm. uh, so far I'm hearing that the teams are already formed as well surrounding those tasks. Am I correct? No, I mean, like, just I'm forming teams, like, just I'm now I'm onboarding people, like, re onboarding mm -hmm. people, talking to them, uh, doing a kind of a short uh, onboarding. Because I, in our, uh, in the list of our team, we have something like 50 plus people. So, mm -hmm. and it, my qu first question, okay, the, 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 are those people from other teams or just there are some silent? member hidden members mm -hmm. or whatever it is so i need to figure out and i have already a couple of uh, talks uh, calls mm -hmm. let's say reintroduction and very often there are persons who just they didn't know what to do i mean they 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 they, they register they uh, enrolled they registered Look, they... Yeah, well some of them are like taught, like currently they're in the state of being lost and what i'm hearing that imran already kind of talked with some people that are kind of tend to yeah say, i mean like yeah because imran one. is actively uh, working with whom mm -hmm. with Kiri, Kiri, sorry i i, I misspelled the name uh, uh -huh. imran mm -hmm. yeah you're working already with somebody but those people are already deep into uh like uh, they, they dived into certain subject mm. uh, with you yeah. and uh, the the idea is that i need still people for instance uh, to work on uh, preparing new uh, uh, versions of data like v10 v11 etc <laughs> or uh, well sure i mean lucas for sure i'm just like saying that people who are already kind of gravitate to this task that imran outlined right yeah. let's just you know let them go with it yeah so let before them before define we define the scope identify and you know we'll be see before we do i would strongly recommend for us to actually define the um, uh the the actual interfaces to each and like you you have these nice like kind of blocks right the metadata extraction the language model semantic search but what is missing is the actual expectations and how they congregate together. And well, just, Arthur, yeah. they're all congregating on the like infrastructure level. So this type of task, I don't see that we need to kind of wait for some interfaces between this. We just need to start no, building. You have to assume that the interface exists and just describe it as simple as you know words. Uh, can I share the screen? Yeah. Oh, so uh, right. Arthur, just before um, we kind of move on. Um, I think Lukash also, this is kind of like a horizontal team in terms of there's people outside of search engine that's working on this, like uh, specifically the metadata extraction, right? There's the paper classification. There's some people from Christine's team. I copied this over from task ties that this is what they're doing, right? Yeah. So I think like what needs to be done and to Archer's point um, is actually list out all the metadata we would like see and that's what i've been trying to do I would, I would love to have some help too is see who needs what like sample size task vt needs it task ties needs it right everyone needs it so that's obviously a priority but the other ones we'd have to kind of prioritize based off who needs what and, and regarding yeah sorry Archie, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just about uh, the similar thing with ontologies, right? Ontology is just a subdomain, right? Oh, uh, like, can, I, can I ask one question? Uh, I'm just looking at this uh, diagram and I don't understand quite a few things. First of all, okay. uh, what is database ACA Dataverse? And second, ontologies from Dataverse. Can you please elaborate on this? Yeah, so um, let's use uh, task VT's uh, protein protein interactions as an example. Um, so I would assume, and you could correct me, Slava, um, the ontology is used to actually create the knowledge graph for protein interactions. The ontology would be hosted on the dataverse, 
and the knowledge no, graph would be also hosted. True. This is not true. You can host only archive of ontology. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's not possible to host database in Dataverse. It's possible to host archive. And oh, it's a okay. big difference because can you explain? Actually, uh, I, I don't actually, get it. Arch arch it's about something about curation of your data. So if you have archive uh, one, let's say a zip file uh, containing all stuff already packed, and you can create it, you can provide uh, provenance information about uh, the process that was used, and about tools, and about people that we are involved in, and all this kind of stuff, right? And to get it back in the system, you should actually download archive. It can be like Docker image, it can be your data snapshot, and run it in some kind of infrastructure, like MongoDB, Elastic, uh, whatever we'll have. Ah, uh, so, got it. So okay. I think from this point of view, well, I think you should really think uh, uh, about all these connection lines, because I don't see how, how it's going to work. Moment. Yeah, and that's why I, I'm, I'm actually proposing to define in very specific terms the inputs and outputs <clears throat> from each of these blocks, and they can be as simple as just one sentence. So, uh, Imran, can can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Wait, I can I, sharing, can right? I also make make some uh, extra comment about uh, what you presented? So, um, basically, every time when you will execute pipeline, it just experiment. It's not something horizontal. It's not reproducible. It's not possible to use in a kind of um, <coughs> process that you can, you have your like subset and you have common data set. You can run some models and you can produce something new. So in your architecture, I think it's not allowed because, well, it's simply not, <laughs> it will not fit in what you presented. But like, for example, the language models, if we have a better, uh, way of let's say encoding sentences. Can't we just switch it out and then say that's the new the better language model? Mm, no, because uh, first you should build. Why? Okay. Can you explain? Why? Because uh, we're talking about big data. You know? It's not something that you can just run uh, in few seconds. And uh, usually, process can take like okay for like ten GB. It will take twenty four hours. But we can do it as a sandbox, no? Uh, so in this case, you should build a complete infrastructure that will be executed in this sandbox. You should download all data. You should get a proper language model and you should actually verify all results on every stage. And this is what I called infrastructure, horizontal infrastructure. If it's some experiment, well, it's fine. It's just experiment. And uh, it's not possible to trust this experiment because it's not uh, sustainable, simply. Okay. I, so I you could, we, we should we should use um, continuous integration pipeline actually to guarantee that other people from other part of the world can uh, they can also download all stuff they can execute and they should get exactly yep. the same result. This is yep. what the infrastructure does. I think I get it. I I'm not sure if I hmm. I'm able to translate it to Imran. Oh, it's okay. I, I get it too. Um, and I, I don't think like that diagram is supposed to capture all the stuff. This yeah. was mainly like the purpose of this diagram was just because Give a lot structure. of people are joining. Yeah, yeah and they're what, just what, confused what, what, of what how things go. What I'm trying to say, it's uh, just vertical. It's not horizontal, at least how I see it. Okay, well, Slava, I think um, just like because we're pressed on time, I would love to uh, continue this conversation. And maybe we could adjust the diagram as what you're thinking yeah. as well. That okay. sounds like a great idea. So in terms of interfaces, just an example from one of the first submissions that we did, we simply described the input, you know, the, the medical domain heart disease and the output, the list of engrams. And like, you don't care about implementations. You don't care what is inside this code. It's just very simple explanation of the interfaces. And as long as you create that, you immediately set the actual goals and the, 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 the actual sprint for the team. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, Lukash, you had the, the pipeline design doc, right? Maybe yeah. that's the best place to add the detailed information. Yeah, I mean, like, I can, yeah, just uh, give me a second. 
uh, share uh, no, 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 no. Like which one doc uh, was it this one you mean no design uh, I, you, yeah the pipeline yeah. design right yeah uh, it was somewhere here <laughs> no it's like sorry oh yeah i see it all the way on the right i think uh, on the right yeah where <laughs> uh disco engine yeah this one is that the one uh that's the best or no it was just an overview and it was more on um wait share it with me uh, corona white product okay i cannot find it but yeah, we'll i, I think more documents and more documents. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i know what you mean i mean like there's somewhere here i mean uh yeah sorry uh but uh, yeah what's about this doc yeah so i was just like what archer was showing which is the inputs and outputs for each block like yeah. the more detailed not like inner workings but what everything expects as input and output we, we could add it there okay I yeah I, I take uh, a closer look at it and uh, I'm trying to like to propose how we can accommodate this dog to fit this requirement you describe now. Um, guys, because um, we're kind of running a low on time, I would just like to propose a few things in terms yep. of getting the work started. Um, I really liked what Alex showed on that diagram, or, or what the getting Elasticsearch running with semantic search because we still don't have that running yet. Yeah. Um, I think um, unless Alex, do you need anything from us? You mean to get started? Um, yeah. Probably a, a chat with Slava because he runs the infrastructure. Um, other than that, I guess I need the, the actual vectors. I don't know where they are. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Okay, maybe we can uh, have this conversation later on because when you ask for vectors, then the question which ones? Because we have vectors already provided by Brandon, those, those vectors from uh, Spacey, but uh, you mean probably vectors from the BART, and the question is which one? And we have some of them probably, but not for probably for V6 or something like that, if I am correct. So it's not for V9 because V9 is a bit bigger. So yeah, it's like a, a topic for a different conversation, I think. Like, I think so. yeah. And I think what, what Arthur said is great. We should clarify what should get in and what should come out and then it'll be clearer. Yeah. I mean, but I don't mind taking, taking this on. Yeah, okay. There's uh, maybe some other questions on completely different, completely different subject, but also related to to this uh, team. No. Yeah, okay. I think Imran, you can uh, you can take a step on defining inputs and outputs. Uh, I'll jump in. Anton will jump in and help you with that, and that way we can kick off the the actual work. At ASAP. Cool. Cool. Okay. Good. Uh, I think. We are all fine with it. Uh, so yeah, and in this way, I can conclude this session. So I thank you very much. Uh, and I'm going to uh, upload <coughs> everything on YouTube as soon as possible. And uh, we'll see each other on tomorrow, I hope. Uh, all right. So have all a right. nice evening, nice night, mm -hmm. nice morning. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care, guys. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everybody.